Hi, my name is Alex Kukorushkin, and this is the fifth lesson of the mini course on the baselight for the beginners. Today's lesson will be devoted to the timeline and parameters window. In this lesson, we will start exploring the parameters menu. We will see how any parameter of imported media files can be quickly changed. We will learn how to use some editing functions of Baselight. We will see how the strips are arranged and understand what the stack is. And of course, the next tricks and tips. In the previous four lessons, we learned how to create this scene, how to import media files in it, got acquainted with the basic conform and, of course, saw the power and flexibility of Cursource. Also learned how to do quick reconform of our scenes with saving the grades we had in the scene. And also we started to set up the interface according to our needs. But we still have lots of work and new interesting lessons ahead. Today's theme is quite important as you will need to work not only with the parameters window but also with timeline regularly. I recommend to learn and use the hotkeys on your keyboard while working in case if you don't have control surfaces from film light, like slate or backboard. This will help you to work more quickly when you're collaborating and your client will not have to wait. And even if you use control surfaces like tangent element or a bit artist color, you will need to know these hotkeys on your keyboard. At the same time, the interface of the baselight is so thoughtful that you have most of the functions available in one click. For finding needed function, you need to do one mouse click and there is no need to navigate from one menu to another. The parameters window is the most popular window in the baselight, I guess. Of of course, after the timeline window. I hit Ctrl Home to go to the beginning of my timeline. We will use this window so often that it will become very familiar and common after the first project that you will do in the base light. And we will need this window as soon as our media files appear on the timeline. There are truly useful functions in this window. They could be located in another windows and menus, but the creators took into the account the logic and convenience that this way will be more comfortable to work. For example, changing or adjusting media parameters such as Debyer or other parameters or files from the cameras like Alexa or RED. Here I have a RED file and we have a 3D parameter. We can decode it, we can uh, change its exposure, color or even work with lead gamma gain. Uh, this is everything we have in metadata. I also have an Alexa file. And here we have parameters from Alexa. Next is working with sound included in the media file. Also the simplest but very necessary function, flip-flop, which changes the location of our image in space. Here it is, right here, in orientation. Also the function of changing the speed of the original media file, here in this window. Not far from here is an offset and the changing of frame rate and resampling. For example, optical flow or something else. Here we have also interlace mode. Here I can adjust the duration of current shot, and we already saw this function in the previous lesson. The function of cut detection, splitting a media file into scenes, is also not far away. Here 
And of course, one of the most popular positions, especially at the beginning of our path, is the setting of the color space of the media file itself, and as well the individual choice of the space in which the work of the grading tools will take place. These are very important positions. Since the correct setting of color profiles and the choice of space of the work of tools is a good foundation for your grading and the work of the colorist. However, the work of color management will be talked about in a further lesson. And at the end of the initial acquaintance with the parameters window, we will create a color correction layer so that the part of the toolbox appears in the parameters window. This is the left side of the window where we can see the layers with the tools when you select not the media file but the correction layer that we just created. Here we can adjust not only the necessary sequence of the work of the tools but also form an individual set or preset of these instruments and save it for using in future projects those tools that we put in the right order for us. For example, my toolbox is being used, as you see, for the inside and outside it's slightly different, I feel more comfortable this way. However, do not worry if you miss something at the beginning or if you suddenly decided to make adjustments, you always can do this. We will be able to add a tool we need or remove an unnecessary tool in your work or the one that we use very rarely. Also for making your work in base light easier and more flexible, any tool you can add as a separate layer. If you right click on this menu, you will see a context menu where we can select the tool we need or remove the current one or add a few more items to the toolbar. Something like that. What is important to pay attention to is that the sequence of action in the arrangement of tools in the parameters window is exactly the same as in the base light programming generally, namely from the top down. This means that, for example, the U-Shift tool will start working with the image after the video grade, and the application of the Boot Shadow tool will be after the U-Shift tool, but if you swap them, then the effect of these tools on your image will change. Also, do not forget that Baselight has a very powerful tool that shows the force of influence and the way the tools are impacted on the current image, as well the relationship between the layers. This is very similar to Photoshop, only more powerful and more flexible. We can choose what will be based on this or that layer in our work, on the source image or on the previous layer or on the layer with a certain number and also in what way it will do it. Here we see a very convenient and rich assortment of this method. Many other functions and possibilities of working with layers we will consider in another video course, Baselight for advanced users. Also in the parameters windows from the top right here there are two buttons that will allow us to access to the masks and meet, king, etc in one click, and vice versa. And of course, in the parameters windows we can control the keys of any animation, here in this area. And now let's take a look on the editing functions that are available in the base light. But before that, once again, I will remind you that the base light is not a video editing program, and therefore the functions and convenience of using editing functions do not have a priority. But there are still possibilities of conditional editing. So in the edit menu there are two items, edit type and edit mode. Of course, there is a combination of case, alt, plus arrows, up, down, left, right, but if you want to move the selected shot or to a significant distance or do you need to make a small trimming or use the functions of roller slip, that's why we have these functions. So we choose the function edit type and hit overlap. And we see that there are three grabs of double arrows on the selected media files placed on the timeline. With a default mode you can move the layer or layers horizontally and also increase or shorten the duration of the selected layer or layers using the left or right arrows respectively. When switching on the editing mode you can already use the tools rolls and slip.
In the second sub-menu of the edit mode, you can select the parameters that will allow you to apply the editing tool to any part of the selected layer. Experiment with these tools, and though this uh, soft is not for editing, you will understand that you can solve many tasks in case of a certain need. Unfortunately, they are missing an ability to drag the selected layer or layers stack on the timeline with the help of a pen or a mouse. Although it's possible that in future releases something will be changed. Now let's talk about device layers, strips on the timeline. As I said earlier, the sequence of actions in base light is from the top to the bottom layer, and the bottom layer is the culmination of your entire grid. When you add a new layer, you get virtually all the tools at once, because in this one layer you will be able to realize everything you need. However, there are certain moments uh, that will still lead you to the fact that additional layers will be needed, for example, layers with masks, key layers, which are of course better to take out on a separate layers, and also the use of generalizing layers to correct several shots at the same time. A block of layers in Beeslight is called stack. So, as I said, we can have generic layers that will have an impact on several stack groups at the time. For example, I'll create a layer and I will change its effect on several groups of layers. Using the editing functions, I stretch the layer. OK, now everything we do in this layer will have direct impact on all layers, rather, all shots or some of the shots that are above of this layer. For example, this shot is not completely above our generalized layer and therefore the correction has applied only partially. For general perception, the layers have an individual purpose, so they are separated visually by different colors. For example, the base layers are green, the layers with the mask steel, the layers that are different types of keys are uh, used to be purple or red, and so on. Also, there is a general layer with tracking in which the system stores all the information on tracking, which is used in different layers in the same stack. This is very convenient since it doesn't produce additional layers in the stack. The timeline in Baselight is very convenient, however, for any ideal idea there is still a small fly in the fly, namely that despite the fact that we can instantly see our entire timeline and see all that we have done, we still have only partial information, since in order to understand what we did, for example, in this or that shot, we still need to select this shot and seeing its structure of instruments involved, we understand what or rather how exactly we created this grid. Its tricks and tips. The first hit trick and trips will help you to get more information when working with timeline. In order to get more informative, we will have to sacrifice a small section on your desktop. Let's add a small window to this area. I propose to set it for the extended display, although even in the abbreviative form we can see certain layers, but the goal is to get maximum informativeness. Now we will check what we want using this menu. Choose any shot and see everything that we used in grading. The second hit trick and trips is a super function of using the Postgres database and it consists in the fact that all of your actions are always remembered and saved, and even more than many people think. For example, we will now make a certain actions. Now we will exit from the program. Of course, since we want to exit voluntarily, the system will suggest that we save. And let's agree. Uh, now the program has completed its work. We open it again and launch our project and our scene.
as you remember before the exit or actions were saved. However, when using the database, this saving is only one of the control points in the work on the project. And since the system keeps each of your actions from the moment the scene was created, even though you haven't saved or didn't have time to do it or forgot, know that all of your actions are anyway in the memory base. We can press the combination Ctrl plus Z to go backwards to the state of our sin when we even didn't do anything yet, even conform. Let's uh, check. Here are all the actions we did previously, and you can go forward too. So work quietly, the system of saving each action works like a good Swiss watch and allows to work quietly thousands of colorists working on base light all over the world. That's all for today. I hope you will be interested in the next lessons too. Thank you.